explanation of symbols on worksheets are as follows. Use coloring crayons to color the picture. Use your finger to follow the track or line or show the correct picture. Use a coloring crayon to draw a line or write a number or sound. Look at the picture and say the number or sound out loud. Use a scissors to cut on the dotted line. Look at the picture. Use these symbols for the lesson of the day, which will be allocated at the top right side of each page. For example, Lesson 1, Prepositions and Directions. boys and girls welcome to my zone online school my name is Janice Abrams and welcome my friend the theme for today is we are still busy with houses but before we continue with the lesson remember our social distancing and sanitizing of hands between the fingers good lesson three reading genders and ordinal numbers let's go to page 15 what do you see on that page? We see a big blue house. So what must we do on that page? We have to read the story and answer the questions that follows. So let's read there. My house is where my family lives. It is blue. There are four bedrooms where we have a kitchen and three bathrooms. Our family room is where we like to watch television together. When people come over, we eat in the dining room. We have a playroom in the basement. We have a swing in the backyard. I love my house. Now let's go over to the questions. There are five questions. You have to fill in the answers on the lines that they are shown on that page. Okay, question one. What color is the house? Blue. So we have to fill in the answer on top of the line. Question two. Who lives in the house? The family. Question three. How many bedrooms are in the house? Four bedrooms. What is in the backyard? Good. There is a swing in the backyard. Question five. What happens in the family room? We watch television. And remember, boys and girls, we always start with a capital letter and we end the sentence with a full stop. Let's continue with the next page. Page 16. Genders. Who can tell me what is genders? Do you still remember what is genders? Okay, it is a girl or a boy 
or a male or a female. The gender of a person or an animal tells us whether it is a male or a female. Circle the word that matches the picture. Now there are nine pictures and we have to identify whether it's a male or a female. Let's look at the first picture. Is it a boy or a girl? A girl. So you have to circle the correct word. The next picture, is it a man or a woman? A woman. You must circle the word woman. Let's look at the next picture. Is it a lion or a lioness? It's a lion. So you have to circle the correct word. The next picture, is it a peacock or a pig? The, the next picture, is it a father or a mother? The next picture, is it a king or a queen? The next picture, is it a bridegroom or a bride? The next picture, is it a bull or a cow? And the last picture, is it a monk or a nun? Remember what I said? You must circle the correct word. Good. Let's continue with the next page. Page 17. Are we all at page 17? Good. We have a picture there of a male and a female. A boy or a girl. Now under the picture there are two questions that we need to fill in the answers on top of the line. Question one. Is father a man or a woman? A man. Are you a boy or a girl? Good. You fell in the correct answer on the line. Let's continue with the next part. And that is our nouns. Can you remember what is nouns? Nouns identifies people, places, or things. I'm going to repeat myself. A noun identifies people, places, or things. Now we have male nouns and female nouns. The male nouns is father, Man, boy. The female nouns are mother, woman, girl. Match each male to a female correctly with a line. So if we go over to the board, we will see that on the one side is our males, and on the other side is our females. We have to match the male with the female. I'm going to show you two examples, then you have to do the rest. Boys, with what female will we match it? With the girls. So we're going to make a line from the word boys to the word girls. Father. With who does father match? Mother. Good. So you must do the rest. Thank you. Let's go over to page 18. Are we all on page 18? 
So, we will be busy with ordinal numbers. What is ordinal numbers? Ordinal numbers is the position where something is situated. Like say for instance, when we stand in a line, then I ask, where is John standing? Is he first, second, or third in the line? Now, in this case, or on this page, we are busy with cupcakes. And we have to see, where is the cupcake standing? In which, at which position is the cupcake standing? So, let's look at the brown cupcake there. Is it first, second, or third? First. The pink one is second. The blue and orange is third. The orange one is fourth. And the brown and pink one is fifth. Write the ordinal numbers indicated by the colored cupcakes. So what must we do there? We have five cupcakes in that row. We have two cream ones, one blue one, and two cream ones again. Now at which position, at which place is the blue one Standing. Is it first, second, third, fourth, or fifth? It is third. So we will write in the word, not the number, but the word. Third, we will write there in the block. Going over to the next row of cupcakes. We have a pink cupcake, then we have four cream ones. Where is the pink cupcake situated or placed? First, second, third, fourth, or fifth? It is first. So we have to write in the word first. In the block. Let's go over to the next row. We have four cream cupcakes and one blue one at the end. So where is the blue cupcake situated? First, second, third, fourth or fifth? Fill in the correct word in the block. And so you will do the next two rows as well. Where is the pink and brown cupcake situated? And where is the blue and orange cupcake situated? Remember to fill in the words where the block is situated or the empty block is situated. Fill in the word in that empty box. Let's continue over to page 19. We are still busy with our ordinal numbers. But remember, the first one we had to fill in the ordinal names. Now we must fill in the ordinal numbers itself. Write the ordinal number indicating the position of the starfish in each row. So we have to focus on the starfish. We have to see where the starfish is situated or placed in that row. Good. Let's look at the row of the umbrellas. We have two umbrellas, starfish, and two umbrellas again. So where, at which posi position is the starfish fish situated? First, second, third, 
fourth or fifth fill in the correct position in the empty block provided there. The next row we have floaties. Where is the starfish situated? First, second, third, fourth or fifth? Second. Very, very good. And so you will continue with the glasses and the suns. Remember to fill in the correct ordinal number in the open block provided there for you. We come to the end of our lesson. But before we call on Zashi, let's first practice our social distancing, sanitizing of hands between the fingers. Good. We call on Zashi. Zashi! Out your friends anymore, but you can still give yourself some love, or you can practice how to blow hugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And until next time, bye. Did I get sister Hulda Navasida? Did I get a I poa? Namibia oncology center, not a grassy I come from a dequido bounce a hari, ums na hari, uma badang la hurry. No goose at a guinea ha ugu, have it a good of no goose at a ha ugu have a hang are ugu ha. Hoge bounce a Hari, Ida Kadi Nedi E. Twenta Nientin, Novel Coronavirus, Stinky Gusa. Oh, oh, Pounce a Hari. Scientists are racing to find a COVID 19 vaccine. Creating a vaccine usually takes years, sometimes even decades. More than 150 vaccine candidates are being developed worldwide. Some of the trials furthest ahead have produced encouraging results. Several possible vaccines appear to have produced an immune response with antibodies, T cells, and no serious side effects. Antibodies are protective proteins that fight infections in the body. Some T cells kill infected cells. Others help B cells to make the right antibodies to fight a virus. It's uncertain how long immunity to COVID-19 would last. Six other human coronaviruses have been known about for years. Natural immunity for the most common four is quite short-lived and generally lasts a few years. A COVID-19 vaccine could require booster jabs after years or even months. Scientists are using a variety of methods to make a vaccine. Several human trials are creating vaccines using the genetic code of the virus. Other human trials, and some with animals, are trying more traditional methods, such as using a weakened or inactive virus. This variety might lead to more than one type of vaccine. Having several could actually be very useful, as each one may be more effective among different people. Despite the promising progress, it's not guaranteed an effective and reliable vaccine will be found. 
If there isn't one, the virus might eventually infect everyone. Some scientists are hoping to have a vaccine ready for limited use before the end of this year, but most are predicting mid-2021. Once regulators have approved a vaccine, billions of doses will have to be made. Then there's the tricky task of distributing and administering it on a global scale. Collaboration will be needed so the poorest don't miss out. Health workers could be at the front of the queue to get it. But who should be next in line? beautiful souls this is Nikita Winkler and I am here to share easy tools for stretching that you can do just about anywhere this is a demonstration so what's most important is that you take the time that your body needs in each position to release its tension let's get started in this session we will be massaging the feet using a tennis ball or anything alike you can do this sitting or standing. So first I'm going to place the ball in the center of the foot and I'm going to press into the ball to feel the foot open up and then I'm going to start rolling the ball vertically from the inside of the foot to the center and to the outside and I'm giving enough pressure to feel tension release. Next, I'm going to take the ball to the front of the foot, press into it, feel the ball of the foot open up, and then I'm just going to do horizontal motion, side to side. Last, I'm going to place my toes on the ground and the ball close to the heel of the foot, underneath the heel of the foot. And again, same horizontally side to side and that's about it if you feel a lot of tension then just stop there press into it and hold it until the tension releases the benefits of this foot massage is that the body is covered in connective tissue which starts in the feet so by releasing tension in your feet you're actually releasing tension in the rest of the body Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to breathe into your feet and happy stretching. India's Ransomboar Reserve in Rajasthan is home to the rare Bengal Tigers. Every year, John Isaac, an Indian-born photographer, travels from New York City to document the lives of these majestic animals. In the last 10 years, I think my interest has grown tenfold and I'm very particular about the survival of the tigers. His goal is to make sure that people everywhere know about the grave danger Bengal tigers face. Extinction. John holds seminars and photographic exhibitions from his visits to Ranthambore to raise awareness of the plight of these tigers. He's currently working on a book to document their dilemma due to an increasing human population encroaching on their territory. According to John and wildlife experts, each tiger needs as much as nine square kilometers to survive, just under four square miles. The relationship between tigers and people has always been difficult, but now, with much less territory to roam, 
Tigers often wander into human settlements. The conflict between the villagers and the tigers has always been there. And then uh, government tries to compensate if a tiger kills a goat or a, sh a cow. You know, they pay a certain amount to the villagers. In the past, tigers used migration corridors or routes followed by wildlife for travel between summer and winter habitats. Now these pathways have been taken over by people who use them as living quarters and to reap firewood. Uh, we are trying to work with the communities living around and trying to reduce their forest dependency so that we can uh, conserve this uh, corridor patch for the a smooth and easy movement of tigers. Jamuna Devi, a farmer, lives near one of the migratory corridors. She used to depend on the forest for grazing pastures. Now, thanks to a World Wildlife Fund initiative, Jamuna no longer needs to rely on the forest for her family's survival. The secret? Introducing new alternative crops closer to her home. <laughs> The success of this project has led to even more changes. Jamuna decided to plant fodder for her cattle on her excess land to further preserve the habitat of the tigers. She has also switched to cooking gas so that she doesn't have to collect forest wood for fuel. Climate change also has a direct impact on the habitat of tigers. The last two or three years, they say, there's been a drought. The rains have not been regular. Climate change is a serious uh, problem in this country, even it's in, a, in the continent. So keeping these forest areas alive and protected is the only solution. Uh, this year we have raised a nursery of 10,000 uh, saplings. Forest department have shown their interest. They bought around 2,000, 3,000 saplings. The idea is to plant new trees to replace those lost to severe weather conditions and human activity. Poaching used to be a major threat to Bengal tigers. But thankfully, the number of big cats killed by poachers has plummeted due to measures implemented by law enforcement agencies resulting in less demand for tiger products. Especially the introduction of camera traps and digital apps, which automatically take photos of moving tigers and suspicious persons moving around in the forest. Every time I hear something like that, I feel so good, you know, in some ways, some things are working. And so this is what drives me to come and do this. Uh, in my lifetime, if the tigers uh, are extinct, I don't know how I'll handle that. This report was produced by Mary Ferreira for the United Nations.